So it turned out that the non-mutational event, or one of the non-mutational events that can contribute to losing the good copy of the gene, is a process called mitotic recombination. Okay, so um, recombination between chromosomes was known to occur during meiosis, but what about mitotic recombination? Okay, between one of the um, chromatin arms of the wild type copy and one of the chromatin arms of the mutant copy. So effectively, you've got um, a parental gene and a maternal gene. One of them is mutated, and then you can get a mitotic recombination between these two genes, um, these two chromosomes. Now, how does that lead to loss of um, the heterozygous form, and how does that lead to the um, both copies of the tumor suppressor being expressed? Well, I'll explain that in the next slide. So, um, effectively, with mitotic recombination, um, both copies of the new chromosomes remain full length and indistinct, indistinguishable. So you can't see them down the microscope. Okay, so these weren't picked up as easily as other sorts of chromosomal translocations, such as we've discussed already in Burkitt's lymphoma. So, effectively, then <clears throat> we've got um, we've got two chromosomes from different um, parents, maternal paternal copies, and one of them contains a mutant allele. Okay, and typically um, we we can look at the segregation. Um, of these alleles in the offspring of the um, of, of the um, mother to daughter cells, and effectively you look at all of the combinations possible between these parents, and effectively all four offspring or all all four possible combinations are going to be heterozygous. So in this sense, you're not going to be see the um, the effect. Of this mutation because you've got a good copy and the good copy like the break in the car the good copy functions and therefore the, the the cell grows normally okay now if you have a situation where you get mitotic recombination okay so before cell division but you, you get a crossing over of the, the, the chromosome arms between the maternal and paternal copies here. Therefore, you, you then look at segregation into the daughter cells from this parent, okay? So you've had a mitotic recombination event here, and the outcome of that, when you look at the, um, the segregation of these chromosomes, is that you get um, two heterozygous copies, and you get two homozygous copies. Now one is homozygous with two good copies, but one is homozygous with two bad copies. Okay, so you've gone from a situation where you had all possible offspring being heterozygous, and you've lost that heterozygosity. So this is called loss of heterozygosity. And what you have now is a situation that because of the mitotic recombination, some of the offspring can be mutant in both copies of the same allele. And therefore, if this is a tumor suppressor gene, such as retinoblastoma, then all cells will contain two bad copies of the gene of the same allele. And therefore, we'll see bilateral retinoblastoma, or we'll see a version of retinoblastoma. So we've gone from a heterozygous offspring to a homozygous. Okay? So this is called loss of heterozygosity. Okay? And it's a non-mutational event leading to the loss of the good copy of the tumor suppressor gene. So um, mitotic recombination occurs at a higher rate than, um, than mutations through um, um, normal processes. And it's a far easier way of the cell to lose the remaining good copy. And following mitotic recombination, 
the cells lose their heterozygosity to become homozygous. And it turns out that there's another mechanism to lose heterozygosity that occurs at an even higher frequency than mitotic recombination. And that's called gene conversion. Okay, so here we have um, gene conversion, and effectively um, during DNA um, replication, you get the, um, the, the DNA polymerase jumping strands between the two copies of the two different alleles. So effectively, um, you have two alleles, one has a mutation and one doesn't, um, so it's heterozygous, and you get the DNA polymerase copying um, one of these and then jumping to the other allele and then jumping back to this allele. So then when you get your segregation of the chromosomes, again you get loss of heterozygosity. So you get um, one of the options being um, a cell that's got two copies of the mutation. So there are two mechanisms which have been uncovered to explain loss of heterozygosity. And when you look at the actual um, individual and you, you do gene sequencing of both alleles, it should come of no surprise to you that on each allele there's the same mutation. The same position, the same type of mutation is on both. And that's because the mistake has been copied onto the other chromosome before segregation. So it's not two independent mutations that would occur at very low frequency. Such a low frequency is that it doesn't explain the occurrence of these conditions. So there's, this is very strong evidence because both mutations on both alleles is the same, there had to be other mechanisms. And when they looked in deeper, they identified mitotic recombination and gene conversion as mechanisms to lose heterozygosity so that you have two bad copies of the gene.